Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Starfire Sports Stadium, the home of the Seattle Seawolves, the Major League Rugby team who were up until recently the reigning champions until the Giltinis secured that championship as per COVID. But that's a long story that we don't have time for right now. What we have time for, though, is Colin Hawley and Matt McCarthy. That's yours truly here in the booth, Colin. And we got a big match, the Old Blue New York against the Denver Barbarians. Yeah, this is going to be a physical contest. Both teams have floated around the championship series. I know Derek Lipska mentioned that in 2014 they had the runner-up here, so he's back looking for some championship status. But Denver Barbarians coming off their first game yesterday, up 17 points to zero over Life West. Life West scored 26 unanswered points in the second half. Since then, they learned a valuable lesson and have been as resilient through the entire 14 minutes. Excited to see what they're going to have and to Evan play Williams for today. Gets us started, and here comes Life West taking that opening kickoff and being brought into touch. Maybe not, says the referee. I'm sorry, the Denver Barbarians. I just I'm still I'm still seeing green and white from that performance <laughs> by the Life West Gladiatrix earlier. Call it. So apologies. I'm get I'm getting it right. Have my seventh coffee, but in the meantime. It is the Denver Barbarians. Folks, you want to know what a pro's pro is? Colin just pointed to the sheet and said, without saying you idiot, you're calling the wrong team. Got to get switched on Gotta here. Get switched on. But the switched Barbarians. Oh, the Barbarians. The Denver Barbarians. And this should be what it's been lived up to, or what, what it's been billed as, as a very, very good match. This men's quarter final oh danger they are going alone i don't think he's got that support was too slow that's the danger of hitting that midfield half gap you got to have support with it here goes old blue oh here's a nice race on the outside that looks like it's going to be a kue he didn't have it enough nice tackle at the end by denver alex Werber with that leg tackle nice job on the edge and there's a penalty calling quick tap taken scooting in is it franklin He's just shy, but it's going to be another penalty for not releasing against Denver. They better be careful. Hill. A couple penalties on the goal line. I'd be looking at a yellow card. There's Mike St. Clair on the outside. Old Blue testing, but now they turn it over. Did they turn it over? Going to the sideline. What do you got here? Mr. Hawley. Not sure what was going on, but great defensive Barbarians. Old Blue probing, getting a couple penalties early. And here we go. He's going to the pocket. I told you, too many penalties on that goal line. Wow. And he went to the card for a high tackle. And that's a big blow wow. to the Barbarians here with only two minutes gone. Wow. And just like that, Old Blue with a man advantage. Let's see if they can take advantage. Oh, the fend off. There goes Akui in for the try. Manate Akue puts Old Blue on top. Five zip. Manate Akue on the edge, doing a little pirouette out of the tackle. Just classy, silky rugby from the big man on the edge. I mean, that's what you want to do in sevens. At some point in time, you want a one-on-one -on -one scenario on the edge. Get it to your guys that are electric on the corners and let them go ahead and create. Right there, you put it in Akui's hands. He got a pirouette out of the tackle. Nice shifty move and got the try. Great pattern by Old Blue, getting it down there, maintaining possession. Barbarians trying to go ahead and have the defense there, but too many penalties get them a man down. So again, scrappy start to this match, just like we thought it was going to be. And you know what? He did that holy-esque spinorama after the fence. Hoo -hoo. Get it into the try zone. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a legend that I have to play. It's all right to be good, Matt. It's all right to be good. <laughs> it's all right to be good. But John Persh would say it's, it's great. That's what his superlative was about this tournament and the fact that we're playing. But nicely taken by Denver under pressure as they are under pressure by a, being a man down by definition with a person in the sin bin. Johnson with a nice hard charging run. With a man down, they're gonna have to play conservatively here. It's almost like every player on the field, all six know that this is gonna be a hard two minutes. Everybody has to work hard and get to the breakdowns. Get physical oh. just like this run. Oh, that's a great run. Bruising run, perhaps sending a message to Old Blue. Hey, we're still here. Ooh, from the side, getting their hands in there or not rolling away. And suddenly here come the Barbarians. 
You don't get the name Barbarians without being <laughs> tough, Colin. They've got five guys in this quadrant of the field, and Norvell Stewart just on the edge. They're saying, okay, we're not using this wide. We're just going to go play physical, hard mouth rugby and go straight north south, just like this. And does he get over the edge? And that's going to be a try wow, short for the headed. Barbarians with six men. Wow. That's DJ Stewart, Norvell, but he goes by DJ. And that was a great try. That He had a big part of that one. And wow, just like that, short-handed. We've seen that a couple times this weekend with the team, with the player down. It almost wakes you up to the physicality of the game. It's all right. We can't depend on anybody else. Somebody else can't do my job. We all got to hit the breakdown. There's a new importance and motivation to get there to the breakdown and just go north-south. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Easy as you like. Okay, here we go. Campbell Johnson's conversion no good. They call him Soup. But soup. Campbell. Johnson. Campbell Soup. I got yeah, it. This, this, I'm just reading what's in front of us on the teleprompter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we've got these little notes from the teams. It's not like we're making them up. But how are we doing on that sin bin? Are we back at full strength? Shit, it was a right around the two minute mark. So I think we should be back. Yeah, I'm counting seven. So it's and back at full strength. Denver, so not only did they survive the penalty, they thrived on the penalty. A little missed tackle there by Wormer, but squirt out of the tackle. Looks like Denver recovered, but a ball on the deck. And that's kicked into touch, but it's, it's a penalty to Denver. Offsides is the call. We'll see what Denver decides to do with this. They're going to go for the corner. You like that call? Not a bad option. They've got a pretty tall team. And you look at number one, Alex Warmer out there. I mean, he's a tall lad. It looks like they could have some strong lifters in front. So getting him up, you know, they like their chances here. And also with this set piece ball, the defensive line has to be back 10 meters. So it's a great attacking platform. Bateman gets it in. They get the line out and they are on attack. One man on the outside. Oh, great defense from Old Blue. Great tackle. Dominant tackle, is that Mike St. Clair? But here comes the Barbarians coming the other way. Comes that green wave into a black wall. And a penalty earned by Old Blue. Old Blue did a great job of defense, staying in front of that attack. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, just like that, taking it the other way. The Barbarians with a try, call it. I mean, that's a great heads up play. Is that Norvell Stewart on the outside? I think that was D DJ Nor Norvell, DJ Stewart. I mean, that's what happens when you have an aggressive defensive line on the outside. I mean, he's been playing up in the face of the attack all weekend. And you just can't let that ball float like that. To throw those big, long skip passes, you need depth in your attack. And it was just too flat a line. It was, looked like they were trying to run a strike move instead of a skip pass. but. Great heads up play, awesome pickoff in the middle, and that's going to bring us to halftime where the Denver Barbarians lead Old Blue 12 points to five wow. and what we thought was going to be a pretty scrappy match. You know, he's a big fella, Mr. Stewart, and he imposes will. There's another big fella for Old Blue that kind of matches him is Derek Lipscomb. He's not on the pitch right now. Interesting to see what happens halftime for Old Blue because it looked like they were going to be, had the upper hand. They were pressuring Denver. Denver got penalized a number of times to have that card, and then they score, and then they score again. Where you're looking at, like Denver's playing out of their skin by all rights. Old Blue started well, a couple early penalties and yellow card for Denver, but literally that try that Old Blue let Denver in with six men down, that's just something, they just went north-south. They yeah. had five guys within 10 meters of the pitch. That's just, you got to tackle, you got to put the guys on the deck, and they can't get momentum, and they just allowed it to happen which now we get that pickoff try and, you know, 12 points to five, here we are. You know, in Major League Rugby, that would have been the pick seven with that automatic conversion, oh, right? That's right, under the sticks, no conversion necessary. What do you think of that? You like the, you know, you like the automatic conversion? Because, you know, like in the beginning of the Major League season, that the weather was a real factor, like wind was blowing like crazy, but they were scoring under the posts. And then you saw a couple of penalty conversion, or penalty attempts, and they just were being blown all over the pitch. Right, and they were gimmies in a normal scenario. 
I get it. It makes sense. You know, the, the competitor in me is. You it's know, like the intentional walk there's, in there's baseball. No, there's no freebies. You right. know, the intentional the day, walk in baseball. Make them throw the four you know, pitches. Makes sense. There's Derek Lipscomb on the pitch. In case I missed him earlier, he's out there now. So I guess either I missed it in the first half or they heard me here. Because yeah, that's the influence big. we have on the game, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Ryan Murphy's listening at home. Steve, List Steve Lewis is listening at home. They made the phone call. McCarthy said to get Derek out there. And I know his students, his young to middle, mid teenage students are listening and they are watching. Don't mess with your teacher, kids. He is a, a specimen. But anyway, Old Blue taking the start, the kick to our second half. They are in the black and blue. The Barbarians of Denver are in the green and white, and they lead Old Blue 12-5 right now. And there's a knock on. Commentator's curse. Lipscomb knocks it on. And after no advantage on the knock-on, it's going to be a scrum down to Denver call. Yeah, it looked like they had something going there off the penalty, the quick tap. The defensive line for the Barbarians came up by the nine that picked up that ball from the penalty and just forced him inside. And that's where the depth on your attack needs to be there. I mean, it's easy for defense to kind of come up and cut off the attack and drop you back inside if you got that heat from the defense coming from the inside. So you got to make sure that the defense can't stop you getting yourself wide and expanding that defense and opening some holes for your team. All right, here comes Denver. Nobody was going weak on that, by the way, on that, that set piece, but here they come back to midfield. Some great moves, some little ankle breaking moves. And a good tackle, good defensive coverage. Oh, look at this counter. By Old Blue and a good clear out, and they're going to earn the penalty. Great aggressive counter ruck by Old Blue, and away we go. That was Malik Bryant who held on to the ball after some nice shifty running. And Old Blue now trying to get the equalizer. Great there, skills. Well, five. Here's Lipscomb. He's got a Kue. Oh, oh wow. great collision. He doesn't go down. The ball, the defender does. Some more momentum. Yeah, ball in two hands and just the bump off. No, <laughs> no wiggle in that run. But there's the penalty. Wow. That's a quick turn of events. What do we have there? Yeah, we can see the replay. But oh, it's going to be a scrum down. So he called. I guess he called a knock. Guess it was a knock on a yep. it coming in and you know making sure if you're going to go ahead and make that collision, you know it's got to end well on the outside. All right. You want to run through the phases. You want to hit the corners, stretch the defense, make them the compress around the rock, then move that ball away to the other side of the field to get that defense running. And here comes Old Blue trying to go to the corner. Speedsters. And wow. he's in. What a run. What a score. Wow. <laughs> Just to the opposite side of the field, the opposite corner. We'll get that number in a second. But what a try, Colin. Oh, that's just pure gas on the sevens pitch and <laughs> you can't teach it you just got to get your speedsters out there get them the ball in hands and teach them how to take that corner and create that space that he had with the speed it was just a drift across the field and eventually the two speedsters going at it again and getting to the corner i mean that's just pure athleticism and pace on the outside getting that try for old blue good attempt on the conversion but it went wide there's a replay for you have another look, and it's a drift across the field. There's the switch that holds the inside defender, and it's just speedster against speedster. He already has the angle to get to the corner. A nice try on the edge. I think that was Looks number like 21. Looks like that was 21. Was that, that Naposky? Naposky? Eric Naposky, UCLA right. product. There you go. One of your rivals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're a Cal Bear, if I'm not mistaken. Is that accurate? Yeah, go Bears. You don't want to brew in your life. <laughs> Just kidding. How, did you Just get 10 kidding. bucks for Bruins, that? Bruins have a great that one in, But here comes and the here Barbarians. The Barbarians at the gate, but it's a knock-on. And Old Blue survives that one. Unlucky for Denver. Two points of difference. Denver smelling the try zone there from a very shifty run. I mean, Michael Bateman, all tournament, has been a great playmaker in the middle. 
He's gotten caught going by himself, but again, that's kind of the style that they play. They kind of rely on him to go ahead and make a couple people miss and create in the midfield and have players run off of him just like that. I mean, really impressed with, with his ability to play make and get through a gap and set up his teammates. Unlucky there to have the knock on. All right, and here's Old Blue on the other side of that. They are fortunate to have that knock on. Here's Akinola Raymond, who is lightning quick, taking it to the turf. There's Williams. Spinning the ball wide, nicely taken by Chase Shure Haskin. On the outside with that powder blue cap. He's in as a sub. Old Blue making some changes. We'll get the changes if, as we see them. Uh-oh. That ball is turned over. Here comes Denver. Barbarians looking to pad their two-point lead here at Starfire Stadium in the National Club Sevens men's quarterfinal. Oh, wow. Oh, and there's a turn of events. This is one series of turns of events. And there's another one. Barbarians get gifted the ball and just give it right back. You know, Blue had some good attacking pattern going on there, but just the inside guy drifted across the field. You gotta have somebody cutting across that line on the switch line. You just can't drift across the field. The defense is just gonna get drift with you. So hopefully, you know, they have a bit of a word there and figure out who's gonna be the strike runner on those attack phases. That, that engagement looked a little high to me and it's gonna be a penalty to Old Blue and they take the quick tap and start flying down the pitch. That's Nick Franklin. He gets it out to Akinola Raymond. Who doesn't get out into the outside, but there's they were playing the advantage and it's going to be a penalty coming back to that original mark. Here's Williams. Quick tap. He's kind of alone right now, a little isolated, but now he's got support from Franklin. Franklin is thrown to the turf in a big way. Oh. And it's a turnover knock on in contact, it looks like. I mean, we got a minute left to play in this match and this is a knock on there. Ball security has got to be paramount for both teams. All right. So if I was Denver right now, we have this knock on. We're in it. Old Blue Territory. Let's go ahead and calm it down, hit the edges, make sure support is there, and play through the phases. You hit one edge, you hit the second edge. By the third time, the defense has compressed and expanded. You should have some openings. Yeah. So that's the, the secret to sevens, is running through the phases, making that midfield defense run back and forth, and you just can't keep up that pace through three or four phases or more. I mean, that's the elite players that you see in the Olympics able to do that. And now, you just saw Mike out Bateman there. sitting down there for a second. Was he doing that crafty veteran move, like get a breather <laughs> minute, sir, for oh, that that's, reason? We call that the Mary, where you just go down and it's like, hey, the got a little injury, cramp. let's go ahead and have a, have a bit of a breather here yeah. before we, time's expired, the last chance to seal the lead. Denver's just got to hold onto the ball. And it's easy from up here, isn't it? You know, we always we always say that. They just gotta hold on to the ball. Well, they got seven guys trying to take their head off. Old Blue's gotta nuke these breakdowns. There's a little skip pass oh, and knocked it on. And that's here's gonna the be the break that Old Blue wanted. Here comes Williams. He's got Raymond on the outside. Can he turn the corner? No, some good defense. Three jerseys surrounding him. Doesn't matter how fast you oh. are when you got three jerseys on you. But it's going to be not releasing. Nice work and there. And a penalty earned by Old Blue. They're still alive. Lipscomb gets it to Shore Haskin. And now it's knocked on in the collision. What's the ruling going to be here? Yellow card to the Barbarians. Oh, man. Old Blue's alive. Denver did not want that quick tap. Franklin, he needs some support. And it's unbelievable. Not releasing. No. Penalty to the Denver Barbarians, and that's going to do it. Even though they're shorthanded, they just need to kick it out, and they do. And just like that, the Barbarians survive the pressure from Old Blue to win this one. That was a moment by Franklin. He quick tap. He's got to make sure that he's got support if he's going to go by himself into that tackle. He's got to link up with his mates, be like, hey, I'm going in. Oh, man. Get on my six. Literally call it hands on, where your support player has hands literally on your back in that moment. Unlucky for Old Blue, but Barbarians with the <laughs> last yellow card there survive in stunning fashion. Unbelievable. To advance. Unbelievable. What a match. It was squeaky bum time. As Steve the Lizard Lewis would say, I know Brian Murphy is cursing up a storm somewhere in New York, likely, or Washington, but what a match. Great victory for Denver. Heartache for Old Blue in a well, well contested match. What's the next one we got up here, my friend? 
It looks like we have the West Side Roll.